reaching you live and direct from the heart of Africa. If this is your first time watching me on this channel, you are highly, highly welcome. This is the place where we separate the facts from the fiction, the science from the superstitions, and the concepts from the misconceptions about African spirituality. Today, I am going to be talking about how to teach your children African spirituality the organic way. This uh, topic was requested by a subscriber, and I decided to treat it here for the benefit of everybody that uh, will be having difficulty uh, with regards to this. So this is what I'm going to be talking about today. But uh, before then, let's do our customary libation. So please bring out your libation juice. If you having your whiskey, wine, cognac, rum, gin, or akpeteshi, jedi, or gogoro, your vodka, your calidon, anything you have in that you like to drink or bring it out. If it's lemonade, it's allowed. Water, bring it out, except coffee. Okay, let's do the libation. Then uh, let's start the show. Let's get the show on the road. So bring out your whiskey. I'm waiting for you. Those people that are still sleeping and still busy, anything that you have, let's uh, connect together. Let's link up our spirit, our mind, our soul together. They say what uh, wires together, fires together. So I want us to be on the same uh, page today. Today is uh, another special day, day again. And uh, we're going to be talking about some natural things. So, okay. So uh, today will be very good. Before then, let me just wet my mouth a little. My mouth is a little dry this morning, so I just want to take a sip so that when I am talking, the world will be flowing very, very well, and uh, you people will be getting it very well too. Okay, let me just put some foil inside the car. Okay, please get your whiskey or get anything you want to get to, anything that suits your ganja. Okay, let's get this show on the road. So, um, yeah, so you need to get high to fly, okay? High vibrational content requires a high level of dedication. So, are we ready? Okay. So, I'll be calling on a um, shoe. Open out the way. Baba Legba, aka Legbara, aka Quinsu. We greet you this morning. We call you today to open the gate of knowledge for us, open our eyes, our minds, our hearts, our soul. And uh, take your whiskey, give us the ability to always make the right decision in any crossroad, any situation we find ourselves. Let us make the best decision that we be most favorable to us. Give your whiskey, it's a uh, call upon a Zuli. We ask for your guidance, for your protection, for your love, and for your presence in this. Uh, section today we call upon Pupagira of Queen Banda we ask for your blessings for your guidance for your uh, touch touch this section empower us with all the knowledge and wisdom that we need to succeed uh, we call upon uh, Aziza we ask for your knowledge too to empower us we call upon Ufuye we ask for your presence here to guide us and push us in the right direction. We call upon um, Egbesu. We ask for your presence here too. We call upon Ogene. We ask for your presence here. We call upon Ogun. It's a Shango. It's a Orumila. It's a Oya. It's a Obatala. It's a. We call upon Oshun. It's a. We call upon Sekhmet. It's a. We call upon Eru, is a Aset, is a Asa, is a Tehuti, is a Tehuti, is a Ampu, is a Anubis, is a Santisma Moriti, is a Ologbushere, is a Ogbologbo, is a Ogorigbo, is a Ujurie, is a Ejurie, is a 
rich goddess and gods of Africa. We ask for your presence, for your alignment, for your upliftment, for your presence to grace this occasion. Raise this section, open the ass and mind to everybody that we watch this video. For people that are learning how to do or practice African spirituality, give them the grace, give them the wisdom, give them the guidance, and tell them what to do. It's, uh, we call upon uh, our great African ancestors, forefathers that have come before us. People like uh, Malcolm X, it's, uh, Marcus Garvey, it's, uh, Martin Luther King, it's, uh, Michael Jackson, it's, uh, Nessie Mandela, it's, uh, Thomas Sankara, it's, uh, Julius Nerere, it's, uh, General Rollins, it's, uh, Sheikh Antia Dioff, it's, uh, Lucky Dubé, it's, uh, Fela Anikula Kokuti, it's, uh, Dr. John Eric Clark, it's, uh, Dr. Ben Yosef Hakama, it's, uh, Professor Ivan Setima, it's, uh, Sheikh Antia Dioff, it's, uh, we ask that, uh, these great people give us the ability to open the bridge of knowledge, to bridge the gap of our African spirituality, history, and science. And we ask for those children that are yet unborn, we give them their own drink. And uh, we call upon the spirits of those that died fighting for Africa, those that died during the Arab slave trade, the transatlantic slave trade, people that died and their names have been forgotten, people that were killed in genocide, the Congo genocide by uh, Leopold of Bergion, those people that we have forgot, 15 million people that died, we give them this drink, we have not forgotten them. People that died in South African genocide, we give them this drink. People that died in the Native American genocide, Canada, Australia, we give them this drink. We have, we ask their spirit to rest in power and uh, continue to fight for freedom, for justice and uh, upliftment of the indigenous people. In this planet, we give you a drink. It's uh, we call upon all spirit of truth, justice, righteousness, harmonious balance. That uh, spirit of maths, uh, of harmony. We ask for justice. We ask for peace. There will be no peace without justice. We ask for fulfillment of the prophecy. We ask for blessing. And uh, anybody that is fighting to tie down the soul, they tie down the spirit of African people with religious mental slavery political mental slavery, economic hardship, any wicked spirit, any evil person on this channel fighting against the advancement of African spirituality, we ask for them to be nullified, for them to come to nothing, any winch, any wizard in this channel, any psyop person pretending to learn African spirituality that is planning evil, make thunder strike them, make their shit work out like goats, make it not better for them, make their die untimely deaths, any fake person, any fake pastor, any useless idiot in this channel trying to cause problem, trying to sneak into to infiltrate African spirituality, any evil person make their agenda not come, all their plans make it neutralize, make disgrace, embarrassment, and uh, regrets, and all evil things come upon their head this day. It's a. Uh, it's Yaguari. We ask this in the name of Amenra, in the name of Olodumare, in the name of all our African ancestors. Ashe. So, I say, Bill, you don't pass like this. Okay. There have been too many issues so, trying to come up. A lot of evil people are trying to come on this channel to try to come and spy what we are doing here with the aim of polluting it. Of poisoning this channel this is all uh, we need to chase these people out of here these are some people that are uh, working with uh, undercover operatives uh, they'll come here to think how to infiltrate African spirituality then they want to poison it with this their useless gay agenda or some stupid agenda one one useless person came yesterday on the chat was talking about how African spirituality can embrace everybody on the planet can you imagine African spirituality with open hands to embrace all the nonsense, all the evils in the planet, like every other religion. For you to even suggest that instead, that means you are you are an enemy of African spirituality, first of all. I just wrote the person, I just replied that uh, we don't embrace rubbish here. When I read the comment, I was very, very angry. 
we should embrace all this nonsense that is happening in the society, then what are we doing? It means that we are condoning, we are accepting them. We are like, no, there's no difference anymore now. When you accept evil, you accept lie as normal. You accept all this nonsense people are doing as normal things. Accept the gay nonsense, LGBT nonsense, all this um, white supremacy nonsense. Any Tom, Dick and Harry is welcome. No, every Tom, Dick and Harry is not welcome here. Everybody is not welcome here. Okay? This is an exclusive club for people that are dedicated of keeping the old ways of African practice and culture. Okay? This is not for everybody. This is not everybody. You to dare to suggest that kind of thing it means that you are an enemy of African spirituality. I don't need to throw oracle to know where you stand. You are an evil soul. These are some people that are coming here. So we need to be start casting these people out. We need to swear for them. All these people, some sign up, try to register in the program to come and be downloading uh, information. You're not going to get anything here. You're going to get hardship. Your neck will break. You're, you're going to get waiting. You're not know waiting there. You think that African spirituality is powerless. Or you think that we don't know what we are doing here. You think you can just infiltrate here, then just spread your poison and uh, corrupt and dispute the whole place up. You're not going to work. Oh. I'm not here for money. Okay, I am not here for money and I am not selling out. And uh, I'm not here for people that are not serious. So if you think you can infiltrate my program, then to pollute it, you are dreaming. There's nothing you will give me that uh, I'm interested in. I have already seen life. Hungry, they cash me. Okay, so if hungry, they cash you. Now you know they pay you money to come kill your own people. And you really come here with your black skin. They do the thing with it. I just feel sorry for you. You know, some of these um, people, these black people that are infiltrating African spirituality, these are some of these people that uh, they have been raised as thoroughbred Negro pins. Like, if you see these Africans in um, CNN, those black people that cast news in CNN, where you see those kind of African blacks, you, they are not even African. Where you see these um, so called uh, Kunish Negroes, house Negroes, these are people that they were raised from, as a as in maroon from it from the shite from the cradle to the grave these are people probably during the time of transatlantic slave trade their parents are killed then they were taken to america as babies they were raised by a missionary by a church or by one of these in cia uh, control or mk ultra programs they were raised to hate black people to love white people to hate themselves and then when they are adults they now use them as asian asian and provoke sure infiltrators to go into black community, gather information, poison them. So from time to time, I see some kind of black people coming to me, claiming they want to learn African spirituality. But they don't look like black people. They are not connected to Africa. They think it's all about acquiring information, no personal contact. This is how I catch them. There's a day I will dedicate a video to these PSYOP people. You, you will notice some kind of black people you see on the streets or in the news. They don't... They only have black skin, but um, they know nothing about Africa. They hate Africa. They don't even see themselves as an African. How can this person learn African spirituality? You see this kind of people. When you see them, they're like um, total soulless people. Enemies. They think that uh, they were raised by these white people in a, uh, in a poultry or wherever they are raising them. They think that uh, there's unity, uh, there's equality that we in Africa are the ones with the problem that we need to understand white people. They don't know they were raised in a, in a factory for this very purpose. They were raised, groomed, brainwashed, and then to use as a, a kind of um, uh, people that you will see as public opinion uh, pullers. People you will see whereby they want to make them as role models for the rest of the African people. They put them in public places, they give them money, give them position. And there are other Africans who say, oh, I want to be like this uh, white man or this, I will call them white man. I want to be like this black man. And uh, I want, I can be able to make it in the white man's world. You don't know that that very black man you are seeing is an agent. Before white people will give you a high position of authority in their governments, then we know everything, almost everything about you. Okay. They cannot just pick any random black man and put them. They are being, when you are there, you are being used. 
to fight your black to your key on black people like Obama. Is it not Obama that destroyed them in Libya? When Obama was going into Libya, kill, trying to kill Gaddafi, it was like an African versus Africa. Don't know how Obama was being used as a black man. This is a family thing. Anytime American government want to do some idiot decisions in United Nations, they will send a black face there. They will send a black woman, a black ugly woman as a press secretary to be pushing the agenda. You think it's a black person fighting for Africa. You don't know that person is coming there to destroy. So it's not every black person I, I see as my brother. Okay? I, not every black person. I have, I have experience with this. When I see you coming to the program, the kind of things you say and do tells me I am a very good judge of character. Tells me what is going on in your mind. What is your, your viewpoint? I don't need to throw a rackle. What comes out of your mouth and how you are talking to me, always asking for information, wanting to know my next move. I already know this one as I up. Now then be this evil people. There's a way we there's a special place we have for this kind of people. Already most of Nano won't get so before. So you have to be careful about many black people claiming to want to practice African spirituality, coming to this channel to be talking some kind of funny things that will blow your mind. If you really care about Africa, you really want to preserve something, really, there are some things that you will not say. You cannot even imagine it possible. African spirituality is supposed to embrace everybody, every Tom, Dick, and Harry. Then who are we? You think we are running a church here? You think we are looking for, for um, a congregation or, or evangelizing of believers? You think so, that's what it be? You don't know where you did. This is a, a kind of funny thing. You see CNN, you see these black people, I look at people like the Lemon and the Jones. Those are people where they like they race for poultry, for cage. They're not the real black people. When I was in Thailand, I met a lot of black people. You will go to a party. As a black man, there's one code that I have, the black code. Anytime I see a black person in another country, I always acknowledge them. I must wave you. I must do the eye sign. Or I will give you sign to let you know that I, I acknowledge you. You have black skin like me. We are not many here. This is my, I never ignore any black man, any black man, woman I see. In a, for, in a foreign land, I must wave you. Even if we don't talk, I must acknowledge that I see you. Then I walk past you. This is our code, unwritten code. But you will surprise you see some black people. They will see you. They will snub you. They will pretend not to see you. Not that anything is wrong with you. Not that you are coming to meet them from anything. Just to acknowledge that you are a black person. Hi. I you wave there. They will, they will snub you. I say, what kind of black people is this one? You're trying to... Are we competing? Or why are you kind of looking down on me? Most times, these kind of things will come from some so-called black Americans. Some of these um, arrogant black Americans or these um, ones that they raised in poultry that don't have no... They, they hate Africa. So when they see African man, they feel that they are superior to you, that they are more sophisticated, that you are a bush person, they don't want to have anything to do with you. Then when you wave them, they don't wave back. Sometimes you will see them in the club, you go to the club, you will see a black person... A club is a place to chill out. You say hi. The person will snub you. Then the next thing, it will be rolling. You will see this kind of black people in the mix of some white friends. They will be laughing. They will be so-called like trying to behave like they are very cool with these white people that they are the best of bodies. Any little day, they are smiling, trying to let people know that this, they are associated with white people, that they are more superior. You're going to see this kind of people in the club from time to time. And then when you see that, you just know that... Uh, these people, they are Negro pins. They don't associate with any other black person. They only hang out in the white section. They are white. They are blackish whites. Okay, they are blackish. Uh, I don't know they are whitish. This kind of mentality, superior, sophisticated mentality, it's okay to hang with whitey. Whitey is cool. Me and whitey is all good. So I don't need you. You don't have level more than whitey. You don't have level more than me. You don't know white people. You don't have influence in this world. This is the mentality of this kind of blackish people so when you see this kind of people there's nothing these people are there's nothing you can do with them they are just a waste of space okay meanwhile they are suffering from a serious case of inferiority complex because they don't know who they are they don't know that whitey is using them for an, for an agenda whitey will never allow a black person to hang with him if he's not either working against his own people or working for his own interests 
This is how YT operates. So you see this kind of puppet black people, they put them as role models for other black people to emulate, to copy, to say, oh, I want to be like this black man. I want You will never be like him. It's just a token to let you feel that there's no racism, there's no segregation, everything is working fine in the world. So you think that if this black man can make it in the white man's world, that means uh, it's an epitome of success I want to be. You will try your best. You will never be there. They don't know you. They did not raise you in their farm. The only way you can go to that white man's world is to sell your people. Sell your people into slavery is to become a pastor, is to become somebody that will be making decisions that will be unfavorable to your people, either cheating your people, selling your natural resources, signing them into debt, or doing something that will make your people very uncomfortable, enslaving them, re-enslaving them for white supremacy. This is the only way you're going to climb in their world. When you are a actor, they use you to have movies that we look down on Africa, that we destroy African culture and spirituality, that we make you, that we make your people inferior, and you're happy. You see some of our actors in Hollywood, some black actors, I don't want to mention their names, how they are disgracing the whole African race. Some of them will even slap their fellow black man in public just to prove that they are the bigger and uh, gorilla in the room. But they cannot say anything to any, uh, to any white man. They cannot talk, speak anything against oppression in America. These are the kind of black people puppets. And then you want to come to practice Africa. What do you want? Pra what do you want to practice here? Okay. What do you want to practice here? This is not a place for everybody. So this is, by the way, I'm sorry I ranted into these um, useless white people that are coming here. I'm saying this because some of them we watch this video. The people that we are watching this video, this useless white people that are sorry these useless black people that are working for white people these are the people i am talking to i know say on a day here what is it benefiting you if you are born as a king and you die as a slave what shall it profit you if your whole life mission is to enslave african people to enslave your own people for white supremacy what shall it profit you if your work your mission is to destroy any any gathering that they are speaking truth about development of Africa. Your whole not to come there, come there, infiltrate there. What is, what is, what is your profit here? Yeah. How, how do you feel? Do you really sleep? Or are you just a, a, an assassin? How do you feel? Are you a real human being? You well? You well? I need to ask this question because uh, some people, they shock me. We did for this small channel, as small as this channel is, some people don't want to give us peace in this place. What can we do? What can we they do? I tire. So uh, we need to sharp up. We not understand where, where the life they go. Some people are when they say Judas, they are all Judas that are not just no. Anywhere there is truth, they don't want. They want to off the fire. They want to quench the candle. They want quench them. They don't want people to, to move forward. They don't want us to gather, to, to help ourselves, to talk about our own matter without them polluting it or poisoning the place. Which kind of black people be all this? Una be really black people. These are the people that we raised in poultry from the cradle to the grave, Negro pins, in the service of killers and liars. Killers and liars in the service of killers and liars. Who are you killing? Your own African people. This is your work. This is your mission. I am ashamed of you. But uh, you will not succeed here because we are not alone here. And uh, this is our time, okay? We have capacity now. This is not the time of them say. This is not the time of fear. This is not the time you can come and threaten people anyhow. So you have no power here. I am not looking for money, okay? I am not a seller. So any evil plan you come to say you want to do, it not going to work. I go only the embrace embarrass you now. The disgrace on her every day, insult on out of this place, and I go start to the sweat for her very soon. Since on no one leave the that in alone, so so on I go get the reward of which on her define. So now so we go the do one for now. So my today topic is how to teach African spirituality to your children. Somebody has this um, important topic. I say, well, it's truth. How do you teach African spirituality? You living in America, they don't have any Afrocentric school. You living in the neighborhood or for uh, the colonial master nothing there's no book no community 
no avenue to empower your children. How do you solve this problem? You don't even have a community, a black community, where we will say, you know, they safe. Nobody they talk, all of them are Christians and Muslims. If you find yourself in this community, this kind of situation, it is easy. The best way to teach your children African spirituality is to practice it in front of them. Okay, this is the way I do my own. Could you believe that still in Nigeria, we are still persecuted? We still don't have a lot, a very strong community here practicing African spirituality. If you come to Nigeria, you'll be surprised. Most of the people here, they are traditionalists, and as traditionalists, they follow tradition, they don't deviate from it. And the kind of way they practice this traditionality, it will not move us forward in life. I have said this many, many times, we need to innovate. We need to follow the ways of the ancient Kushite Kemetic people. They're always innovating their spiritual practice. That is the only way we can grow. Many traditionalists don't know how to innovate. This is the problem we're having with traditionalists. So their system is not working for them. It is not currently working for Africa. I've been saying this. Many of us need to innovate in Nigeria. This is why I'm doing this video talking about African spirituality. It needs to grow. So if you find yourself like this, you don't have any shrine you can take your children to. It's not like church service. So the best way to teach them is to practice it. Children learn by copying. They learn by example. You will practice it. You will have to set up a shrine in your house. So that your children can see African spirituality in action. Okay, you must set up a public shrine like me. In my own case, I have three shrines. I have one in my living room. I have two in my room. This is one, yeah. Okay, the one in my living room is to show that when you enter my house, you know that this person is not a Christian. This person practices something else. Is to show my, my faith or my practice, my spiritual beliefs. And not only that, it's also to express myself, my spirituality to the outside world, that this is uh, what I stand for. So I put that there's a, a shrine there, little mini one I just carve at the edge of the wall. I just hang, I just put the plaque there. I put some things, the statue of the deity, inset bowl, and I put the kind of uh, glass like this. Every and three days, I change the liquid inside. Sometimes I put the liquid. It goes down. It's a plain glass. You can see it. And uh, I change it. I don't leave it there for one month. I always change it, give the deity new wheat and drink or whiskey. Anything I have, I pour it there. Then I put my incense stick there. So everybody that comes to my house know that I practice African spirituality. I don't hide it. So, of course, my children will know. They know. They see me doing this every day. They see me lighting incense there. They ask who is this. I say this is the name of the deity. This is the deity guiding and protecting the house. So if you come into my house, you're going to see this, okay? Your children need to see your altar. This altar, sometimes people come into the room, the living room, they touch it. It's public altar. It's okay to touch. They believe, some people believe that there's no power there. I'm happy when you touch it because there's no way you're going to touch my altar that your life will not change. Because I know the power there. I know that the spirit is very, very active. And there's no way you're going to touch that thing and that spirit will not touch you back. So when people touch my the statue of my deity, I am happy. I'll say, mm -hmm, you must collect something. There's no way you see something there in your own. Why you go touch them? You walk out, go there confidently. Nobody asks you anything. You go and pick it up and look it like this. And you see, say power nothing. The same way you pick up my statue of my deity and look at it. That the same way is the way my deity will pick you up and look at you. Then you go no say power day. So when people touch it, sometimes I am very very happy. It's on his own, minding his business. Somebody will walk in, they will walk around the house, they go and touch it. When you touch it, something must also touch you back. So I don't talk. That one is okay for people to touch. Okay. Then uh, the ones that I use in my room, my private one, nobody touch them. It is my private practice where I do spells for people, where I do my meditation. It is not open to anybody. Nobody, nothing can go there. People in my house, they know this. They know my practice. My kids know that practice. Okay? So, they see me doing this every day. They see me practicing. They see me talking about African spirituality. They see me doing videos. It copies me. It copies. This is the way you do it. You don't need to force them to do anything. You don't need to force them. No, you must go and meditate. You must call the name of this. Don't force them. Just do it. They are your children. 
anything you do, if you have good character, your children will copy it. You have bad, bad character, your children will copy it. They want to be like you. It's not what you tell them that children follow. It is what you do, how you live your life. You cannot tell your children that uh, don't smoke and you are a marine smoker and you smoke every day. You cannot tell your children don't drink and you are a drunkard. It's important. Your children will be seeing you every day. They will copy their parents. Okay, so don't worry about the outside world. Don't matter if they go to school, they teach them Christianity, teach them all these lies. What you tell them is what they will listen to. You are the one providing for them. You are the one sleeping in the same house with them. The thing you tell them, that is what they will believe. And what you're telling them, you have to tell them with evidence. Okay, that's why you yourself, you need to know African spirituality. You must study it. Okay, when they tell them that uh, Jesus Christ is their master, I say no. Jesus Christ is a criminal. Jesus Christ is a slave catcher. Jesus Christ has done nothing for Africa. Give them the examples. Show them. I always say this in public. I don't hide it. I show my children everything. I show my son everything that is happening. See, see, see. Look at the life of this person. See the way he's behaving. Look at the life of this person. See, look at me. Do you see me doing like this? He sees everything. I don't hide anything from him when it comes to spirituality. He asks me questions. What is the name of this deity? What does the deity do? I tell him. This is a deity. This is what it does. This is why it is here. You see me doing spell. Why are you doing this spell? Why are you putting this in this? I say, I'm putting this in this so that I can get this result, this result. He will ask me, is this possible? I'll say, yes, in African spirituality, it is possible. This is the way I do it. Simple interaction, simple honesty. This is the things that you need to be doing for your children. Don't force them. There is one case. Now, the person that asked this question, this is a woman that... Uh, contacted me recently. It's a funny case. She has three children. They're living outside uh, abroad. In our own case, normally when uh, there's a family like this, it is the children that wakes up first. Then the parents will still be in Christianity or Islam. In this case, the mother has woken up. They, they, are, they are from a Muslim family. The mother has already woken up to see the evil of religion. But the children are still Muslims. Now she's trying to change them from Muslim into African spirituality. The children are resisting. So she called me, she complained to me, I life. I said, normally it's the children that wakes up first. But now you have woken up, and now the children are resisting. How are you going to solve this problem? They try to give them herbs, teach them the children. I said, no, we are Muslims, we are Muslims. We don't need this, this is demonic. I was laughing, I said, wow. Normally it's the children that used to wake up. Oh, now, nah, mama don't wake up now. Nah, children see the darkness. How will we do this problem? I say, well, we have to find a way. Now you are the one that teach them Islam. Now you have to reteach them African spirituality again. First of all, you need to learn it because you cannot teach what you don't know. And uh, I told her, don't force them. Children will always be children. Don't force them. Okay? If you force them, they will resist it. They will gang up against you. If you find yourself in this situation, don't force the children. Just slowly change. Gather enough uh, because they will surely ask you questions. And you must be ready for those questions. So your work is cut out for you. You need to now start studying everything. When they ask you, why are you doing this? Why did you change your mind? You need to start bringing silent points. So you have work to do. So now you need to start studying. Learning the thing. Because when they bring academic questions, you should be able to defend yourself with facts. Especially the intelligent children. So you have to prepare. Okay? You must study it. Study the thing. You go learn now. You go start reading African history, especially your children went to school. And when you are, when you have these materials, you need to give them for them to read. Because uh, see, I see Mama now as being she being initiated into a secret society, they will not understand. Why are you doing this? If they ask you, why are you not pouring libation? You say, well, this is the way my ancestors do it. They will say which ancestors, and then you start explaining the people that come before, 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 before the people from Islam came. Uh, many questions will be waiting for you, of course. So, this kind of situation, when you find yourself, don't force the people. Just tell them that uh, you are having uh, a change of heart. You have come to realize that uh, what we were practicing before is not right. That these are foreign religions and they are not really helping us. And you have been practicing them all your life. You are not seeing any result. And now you want to try something new or you have seen a new light. And uh, if they are interested, you can share this new information with them. Then you start doing your thing. You must have an altar at home if you have children. If you want them to practice, you must set up an altar. They need to see you. 
doing this. They need to see you lighting the insects. They need to see you with the African deity. They need to see the representation. As they are seeing this every day, it is going into their mind. It is going to their spirit. It is going into their consciousness. Okay, or it becomes normal for them. When it is not normalized, they are no longer afraid. When they see other spiritualists, they will say, Oh, my father practiced this. There's nothing there. Then when somebody wants to say African spiritualists are evil people, they say it's a lie. My father practiced it. He's not a bad person. You don't know what you are talking about. When somebody throws them questions outside, they will come to ask you that same question. Then you should be able to explain accurately with enough facts and evidence. No, it's not like this. This is like this. It's not like this. This is like this. People will come sometimes and will tell my, my son different things to come and ask. My son will say, is this true? I will say, no, that person is the one that is lying. This is the truth. Then I will show him example. This is how he learns. So my son now, I don't force him to do anything with me. But now he knows a lot of things about African spirituality more than the average practitioner. If you come, you want to poison him with Christ. He tells you, I don't go to church. Church is for stupid people. Church is for fake people, ignorant. We just tell you straight. He knows all these things. He has more knowledge than a lot of adults. How does he know all these things? He sees it happening. What we do, this we do for your children is that uh, it will connect your children to their source, to their right source. Okay? By you doing this, actually doing these uh, activities in front of them, pouring your libation, lighting your inset, putting the pictures of the deities in the house, using the pictures of Asian Kemet, Asian Africa, the glory of Asian Africa that many people have not seen. You frame those pictures. Come then in your living room so that your children can be seeing them. You come, take pictures of the Sphinx, of African deities, use them to do um, plaques, use them to decorate your house. Your children need to be seeing this so that they will be having confidence in, in Africa. A lot of children don't see any glorious thing about Africa. They don't think Africa will have any history. Because nobody show them, nobody teach them. They don't say all these things. We don't have any monuments commemorating any great person, especially in Nigeria. Very few monuments is what we have. I'll be doing a separate video on the power of monuments and status in consciousness rising. I'll be doing that video later on. It's very, very important. For you, you have children at home, you want to raise their consciousness, you want them to love Africa. They need to see great things that African people have done before. They need to know great Africans that are worthy of emulation. That's why I do this libation. I call great names of African people that are powerful. This is what you're not going to see in the news. CNN, Al Jazeera, BBC have never mentioned the name of Dr. John Eric Clark once. They have never mentioned Shank Atadioff once. They have never mentioned Ivan Setima once. They barely mentioned a red tube man. They want to associate everything with us with slavery. They never mentioned Dr. Oibo once. Great people, even Fela. They never meant, they don't want us to know great, powerful Africans so that they would think that we, we come from a people of nothing. Then the Africans that have distinguished yourself, they want to associate them in evil, like the way they poison Michael Jackson to want to say Michael Jackson is a child molester. They want to off his lights because he's a great man worthy of emulation. They want to, they could not manipulate him. They want to destroy his character. This is how whitey behaves. So you need to be showing them positive role models in Africa. You need to be calling their names, associate this, we give them pride. Talk about our history. You must show them this, we let them know that uh, they are powerful people. They have always been powerful people. Okay, this is what is missing in Africa. A lot of African parents today, the only thing they show their children is image of Jesus Christ. That's why many adults are afraid to leave um, Christianity because they saw their mother and father kneeling down opening their hands every day to, to pray and cry to Master Jesus for money tonight. So they feel that their parents are powerless before Jesus Christ. This behavior that they see every day, their mother and father kneeling down every morning, morning devotion, pray to Master Jesus, night pray to Master Jesus, everybody prays to Master Jesus. They feel that Jesus is the only power. They have no power. They are powerless. And they transfer this inferiority complex straight to the next generation. When your, your children see you, kneeling down to this white image from morning to night. What do you expect them to do? If they have weak minds, they will continue with this legacy. Legacy of slavery, of inferiority complex, of stupidity, of self-hate. This is the danger of religion. So as a 
African spiritualist, you must project a positive, powerful African image in your house. You must have a altar, public altar in your parlor. Your children must see you doing this. If nothing else, for every day or from time to time, light inside there, put whiskey there. Light inside there, put whiskey there. Let them be seeing it, then put the image, African image there. Then the one in your room should be there. In some cases, some people will have an altar outside the house. If you don't want to have outside the house, make sure in your living room, there must be an altar that everybody must see. This is the way to have confidence. When the enemies come to your house, they see you have an altar. Many people will not come. Many people don't come to my house. But they say this guy, a juju man. Yes, if you cannot come to my house because I have practicing my spirituality, then I have a golden scissors to cut off that relationship. I have golden scissors. See where I have golden shape. I not send you. I know the pass you go anywhere. We have freedom of religion in Africa and Nigeria. You cannot say somebody cannot venerate what he wants to venerate. There's freedom of worship here. Yeah? So you cannot just come and tell me who to venerate or who not to venerate. I have a golden scissors to cut off every relationship. I don't want you to come to my house. And I don't go come to your house. It's as simple as that. Okay, if you are free to express yourself, I am also free to express myself. Okay? That the way I see I'll be that too. So do this thing, you must do this thing if you want your children. To learn it, you must have altar that they must be seen every day. They must be seeing it active. And they will study your character. Anything you do is what they will be doing. Okay? That is the way. Another benefit, again, is that this will empower them. It will empower them if we give them self-confidence. This um, uh, identity crisis that so many children have in Africa, whereby they are black, but everything they are teaching them is about whites. This making a lot of Africans to be confused. You're from Africa, you are black. Nothing about Africa they are teaching you in school. They don't teach you your history. They don't teach you your culture. They don't teach you your language. Everything you're learning is European culture, European history, European heritage, European icon. It causes identity crisis and inferiority complex in a lot of African people today. They don't know where they belong. Now, many of our people want to be like Whitey because Whitey has pushed this into our curriculum. Even me, when I was a Negro pin, I, was, I, I have a identity crisis. I say, okay, if I ask me to choose between white and black, I will naturally choose whites because I have been learned my country, my society, my religion. I've, pushed, I've been able to send to let me know that white is better than black because they have much emphasis on whites on Europeans. Everything my society has been teaching me is the power of, of Europeans. Everything they try to tell me is everything came from Europe. All my education uh, come from Europe. Uh, all good things come from Europe. And I see this every day. My country cannot produce any, many things. Which day is Nigeria started assembling cars here? Which day? Everything imported, imported, imported. Where are our indigenous scientists? Where are our historians? Nowhere to be found. Even our traditional leaders, what are they doing? Nothing. They are just their ceremonial leaders just to the misbehave. They don't even know their, their role, their function in society. Everything is, Europe is the best place. You want to live a good life, go to Europe, settle down, hopefully get married to one of their play-looking lady, and they'll uh, naturalize and die there. This is success. The highest success for most Christians is to become as white as their master. How do you become as white? By marrying a white woman and living in a white land, eating white food, wearing white clothes, speaking white language. You have not elevated yourself above the average black person. You are not a superior human being because now you are married to a white woman. You are fully white. You are closer to Jesus than ever. You will make heaven. Your children will also make heaven too. This naturally translates. This is inferiority complex that we're teaching our children. Venerating your African deity, we let them know that they have power, they have self-confidence in themselves, and they don't have issue with identity crisis. A lot of Christians, we want to lie that they don't have issue, but they have issue with identity crisis. Ask them about African spirituality, they will tell you it's demolic. Why is it demolic? They cannot explain. They say it's demolic because it did not bring progress to them. How did it not bring progress to you? Because nobody teaches you the truth about African spirituality. What they are teaching you is self-hate. 
a people cannot progress or move forward on self aids Religion brings self aids So you must, if you really want to do something tangible for your next generation, you must teach them the truth. You must not compromise. A lot of people I see Africans, they, they know a little bit of African spirituality. They don't care about their children. They still send their children to church. They still promote white Jesus in everywhere they go. No, very few of them have been able to put their feet down in the public to stand for African spirituality. Many of the so-called people that are hanging around me here, they cannot stand, they just pretend, they are just lip service when they see me. Oh, African spirituality is cool, is cool. But when they go out, they don't stand and support or promote African spirituality. And yet, they want to become my friend. You cannot become my friend. I share this kind of people away. Because I know that uh, they are just wasting time. They are just here to waste my time or, or here to cause proof, to block good, authentic friendship or communications, to block it from, for me to get it with the original people. So I have very few friends. Before you become my friend, you must be tried and tested. I must know, you must see the world the way I see it before I will call you my friend. If you cannot see life the way I see it, we are not friends, so homo. We just did, but we will not be friends. We can reach conclusions for mutual benefit, but we are not friends. Because I know how Christians think I used to be a Christian. I know they are programmed to see anything with a certain lens. And uh, when you start to see me in a certain lens as an enemy or as a potential danger to you, something that must be, I need to protect myself. And I also see you as a potential, potential danger because you are not to be trusted, because you don't know yourself. You are a threat to life. I see these kind of things. So this identity crisis, so help yourself to solve it in your children by connecting them to their roots by showcasing your African spirituality, do not hide it. If you know you love your children, start early, okay? Don't force them, but let them see you practicing it in public. At least put it in your house. When people come, explain. Create debate, create discussion. Before you do this, make sure you all you know your history. Create healthy debates. Spark, let's spark these debates. Charity begins at home. Don't expect somebody to come and teach your children outside. If you don't teach your children, the enemy will teach them for you. And then they start giving you problems. Many children now, they are selling their parents' grave. These are children that will inherit land from their father. They will dash it to church. They will dash their heritage, ancestral land. They give it to church because they want to go to heaven. This is because of the identity crisis, the wrong orientation they have been given by Christianity. You need to stop this so that the children... We not sell your land and all what you have worked for to Christianity. They need to know the importance of cultural heritage. They need to know the importance of African spirituality. This is what you must do. So all those people that I see you see sending your children to, to church and you say you practice African spirituality because of your wife, you what with people say, I feel sorry for you. I feel sorry. Having information and not using it is the same that you, having, uh, you don't have the information. What good of you watching this channel, studying African spirituality? You are not using it to change your life. You're just accumulating the information. You are not better than the ignorant man on the street who knows nothing. The information will not change your life until you start applying it. It is practical. African spirituality is very, very practical. Okay? People need to see it in action. If you don't put it in action, it will not work. You have to make the unconscious conscious. You must create that altar in your house. That's why you see in um, in, uh, in ancient time, in, uh, you go to our villages, all houses have altar. When you go to a village, every house gets shrine. Every house gets shrine. They know about this thing. Every house for village, they get shrine. You must practice. You must get shrine for your house. Your children need to see this thing. See my shrine here. I cannot be talking about African spirituality. I not get you. They see them. When you see them, so your brain, your consciousness not tell you say something there yet. Say an African spirituality be this. But did not tell you. Your mind not there. When you come this channel. So I don't need to explain anything. As you see me sit down now. Your mind go there now. When you see. Waiting with the talk here. When you see the goat head. I need to explain anything. That's what it's supposed to be. And we find that when you identify with your African spirituality. The good thing. People respect you more. People respect you. People see you as authentic. And they watch you. They, they watch how you behave. You now become somebody that people want to really see. Oh, this is my first contact, my first experience with one of these so-called practitioners. I want to know how their character be. 
people will be watching you and they will be learning from you. So people watch me a lot. Even a lot of my enemies, they watch my channel a lot. And they watch me how I behave. I know they find trouble. But if you find my trouble, I know they agree for you. You must behave. I not believe in hope and faith. If you do any art today, you they see any art today. That's why they live my life. So something when food when I need they eat, I need they give person. I need they take nonsense for people. I they respect myself. I they live life according to my capacity. I need they brag, I need they post, I they manage my life. I cut my coat according to my size. That's why I they live my life very, very practical. If somebody try me, I need to give a chance. I hate oppression. Now the way I do my thing is this. So as you see me so now, so you the same shirt when I they wear they shoot this video. Now they wear the waka for time. I need to hide my face. I not send anybody. That they watch me, I they watch them too. Okay, before you say you won't come near me, you will think well. Uh -huh. If you know, if you mash line, you go collect. Before police go come, you don't collect. So I say it be. If I not do anything, people they will go do something. And there are many. So we get matter where we need to talk for public. So that's how it be. When you start identifying with your African spirituality, and you they get respect, you they get dignity, you they get peace of mind. A lot of people that are bugging you, these fake friends, a lot of evil people, they run away from you. A lot of fake family people, fake Christians, they cannot handle you. They cannot manipulate you. So one thing you're going to get is a lot of peace of mind. If you know say so you won't get peace of mind, you want evil relations to avoid your house. Practice, showcase your African spirituality. You go find and say you go to, your house could be empty. Well, and you go to clean. And money go to fill your pockets. Money go to fill your trust me. The ancestors know how to bless you. Okay? It's as simple as that. So I have a lot of I sleep very peacefully in my house. I sleep very peacefully. Everything goes well. I don't have many friends. And uh, I do what I want to do. I have a lot of time in my house. I can also have time for other projects. Not be any happy. You cannot just wake up saying, I mean, won't come visit with that serious thing for mind. You cannot. I'm not going to accept you. So this is very important. Another benefit, again, it will make your children very intelligent and it will bring out their talent quickly. When your children connect to their source, so those ones, you, if you're, you have any shy that is a psychic, they will start bringing it. If they have any kind of talent, artist, creativity, they will, start, they will start exhibiting it without any fear. There are some times where children will exhibit certain level of talent. The parents, due to ignorance, will destroy the talent. They say, no, 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 you cannot be a musician. You cannot be an artist. You must go to church. Everything you want, you must go to church. A child will say, I want to be this. They say, no, you must go to church. Destroy. Christianity have destroyed so many talents of people. It will bring out your child original talents. Okay? It will connect. The best gift is what you can do for them is this. Give them a sense of pride in themselves, a sense of identity, a sense of integrity. Simple thing like this. It's not rocket science. Okay? But you must demonstrate it. It will bring unity to your house. It will bring peace to your house. It will bring progress to your house. It will bring prosperity to your house. Nothing more, nothing less. Okay, so there's nothing to lose from doing this. Okay, so the best way to teach your children is to practice it. Let them see. When they see it in your character, they see how you do your thing. They, don't, they will copy you because now you bond them. Now you defeat them every day. They have no option. Okay, so this is the best gift you can give to your children. Do not be ashamed of your African spirituality. Do not be ashamed. Give them books. I told you, you have to give them. We have a lot of African history books. You're not going to find anywhere in the world. They are hiding these books. I have lots of them. You give them books, destruction of black civilizations, stony legacy, black man of the, of the nine. We have nowadays, we have lots of videos on YouTube. Conscious people are had there. Introduce them to all these things. Let them see reputable people talking about African spirituality, academics, powerful people talking about our history. They need to expose them to all this information. Empower them so that they will know the truth. This is how you teach your children African spirituality. This is how you teach them the importance of heritage, the importance of, of reincarnation, so that they know that uh, they are coming back again, so that they don't sell your, your landed property to church. They don't sell it to church. They don't sell your grave. This is what you need to teach them. 
Many people they're selling their grave today. They teach their, their children Christianity. In Christianity, if you, you as a parents die, you are an automatic demon. If I die today, I am I become a demon to my child. That is what Christianity teaches in, in the world. And then my child can say my grave that uh, there's no contact between the living and the dead. There's no remembering me. All you care about is Jesus, the zombie Jesus. Many of you people teaching this Christianity, I feel sorry for you. This is uh, how they will end. This is why Africa is still in the quagmire it is in because of religion. Okay? So the best way to teach your children African spirituality is to practice it in front of them. Okay? So this is what I have to say today on this issue. Questions or comments are welcome as usual. Like and share this video. Subscribe to the channel. And uh, of course, if you have not gotten my book, Nano Say Go Come, Quantum Physics is waiting for you. For those people that have children, buy this book for your children. A good way for you to bring your children into African spirituality is to give them this book. Okay? Let them read it. This is a book on science, the interrelationship between science and spirituality. This is what they will not teach them in any university, especially in Africa. They don't want them to know this so that uh, they will be, continue to be inferior. Okay? This is the knowledge that they teach to in only elite university, nothing like quantum physics in Africa. They don't want you to know it, but African spirituality is quantum physics. The study of the invisible particles of nature, the study of the spirit world. This is our heritage. Okay, we invented these shapes. So buy this book for your kids. If they're asking you so much question, get this book, tell them to read the book. I tell you, after they read this book, their eyes will open, they will know that you are doing the right thing, they will never, never um, believe anybody again. So a good way is to give your children proper education. Give them the manual, the tools. Do your best as a parents. Okay? If you give them it, they no one read them and they know. But the good one among them go read them and it go move forward. It go carry this to the next level. So the best way to teach them, give them materials. Tell them this book contains all the explanation, explanation of the origin of Christianity explanation of, uh, of the origin of modern science from Africa, the geometry, chemistry, physics, everything is from Africa. Logic, philosophy, everything is from here. All the Greek philosophers came to Africa. Many children, they don't know this. So your children need to know this. They need to read this book. The notion of the CCC is here. The space, time and space travel, everything is here. Ghost DNA is here. A lot of other things. Atomic structure, nuclear physics, quantum physics, the importance of um, quantum physics and plasma physics. Give your children this book. I'll tell them, let them read. When they read, their eye will open. They go, their mind will dig. They go, no waiting day. Then uh, if you want to teach them how to do spell, they want to say, is spells fetish? Is it evil? Why are you doing what you are doing? Give them this one. May they read them. When they read them, they will see the importance of why this knowledge needs to be preserved. Their mind will also day too. Okay, we get books. The time they say African people are not right, that time don't pass. This is the age of knowledge, the age of Aquarius. This is not the age of belief and ignorance. Anybody that wants to choose to remain ignorance is their choice. Right now, we have access to information and we have capacity to deliver. So if you are looking for any information now, you will find it. Okay? Except the person is lazy or the person chooses to remain in the dark. So this is how you can help your children. You must empower them. Empower them with the right knowledge. Don't leave it for school. School will not teach them anything. Of course, church is the worst. Then you want to leave them for street people to teach. Anything can happen. You as the parents, you are the first teacher. Okay? So you must play your part. Give them the right knowledge. Practice it in front of them. Let them see you and copy you. It's better they copy you than they go and copy total stranger outside. Okay, let them copy you. You are the role model, the first role model, the first God that they know. So do your best to create them powerful children. Okay, it's better to raise strong children than to repair broken men. Charity begins at home. Start this your journey in your home. Do your part as a parent. So this is what I have to say today. And I thank you very much for watching. Questions or comments are welcome. Like and share this video. And of course, if you want to learn African spirituality as a parent, I teach it. This is a place dedicated to teaching authentic, original African spirituality. You don't need to fly to Africa. You don't need to pay for expensive initiation. Join my program. Within six months, we have enough knowledge, enough wisdom, enough capacity 
to even open your own shrine. When you learn all these things, then you cannot start teaching the essence of me, teaching this knowledge so that other people can know it and also teach it as well so that we can grow together. So register for my program now. It's not expensive. Six months is just $600. There are people that charge $5,000, $10,000 just to initiate you into stupidity. I don't do that. Me, I will teach you raw knowledge, but you must be willing to read and create time to empower yourself. Okay, you cannot give what you don't have. Before you want to teach, you need to know the things you are teaching. You need to know what you are going into. So you can teach them very well. So join my program, buy my books. If you want to buy spiritual oils, herb, ointments, um, I sell all those things. You want to do your spell work, love spell, axes, baneful spells, packs, the whole nine yards, oracle tarot readings. I do all those things on this channel. Apart from that, I thank you very much for those people that have been watching me. Blessing Amas, I thank you for your being here today, all the rest people on the live chats. I thank you very much. And uh, of course, I'll be seeing you in the subsequent videos as usual. You know the drill. So take care and bye. Peace.